Praise the Lord and uh, welcome to uh, Fresh Manor School of Ministry. My name is Reverend James Solomon. I am standing on behalf of Apostle Duane Jackson this day. I believe God that God is going to mightily bless you as you go through the subject and the lessons of today. Um, we are going into spiritual warfare and um, we are taking one of the uh, strongest uh, lecture that is going to benefit you mightily well. Uh, we are looking at dealing with the strongholds of the enemy. This is very, very important. Uh, pulling down the strongholds. Um, we, as Christians, we need to understand that um, the enemy always built defense always look for a situation where they can prevent us from being able to attack back on them and uh, so today we're going to unveil uncover some of these secret and the weapons of darkness I want to read the scripture to you know throw a little more light on what we're looking at this moment in the book of uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 10, looking at verses 3 to 6. Second Corinthians chapter 10, looking at verses 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I want us to get some kind of little understanding with this scripture. In the Bible, we do not have too many scriptures that refer to strongholds of the enemy. And amazingly, what the Bible calls strongholds here today will surprise you. It will amaze you. We always think about the demonic kingdoms and their powers and hierarchies of Satan and all their principalities, powers, and so on and so forth. But in this note we're looking at today, the Bible is referring us to what we don't even know that can be a stronghold. That's why today we're looking at what are these strongholds. To start with, let me just give you the meaning, the dictionary meaning of strongholds. Strongholds is a place that has been fortified so as to protect it against attack. Strongholds is a place that has been fortified so as to protect it against attack. The second meaning to it is a place where a particular cause of belief is stronghold, defended or upheld. A place where a particular cause of belief is strongly defended or upheld. Now, Remember what I said we're looking at, pulling down the strongholds. We want to make sure that today every stronghold of darkness, of the devil, of the kingdoms of hell, will be pulled down in our lives and ministries in Jesus' name. Going step by step with the scripture we have read, I want to try a little understanding more on that scripture. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In other words, even though we are human, even though we are physical beings, even though our normal operation on earth is based so much on our physical, but the battle we are called to fight, it's spiritual. It's not physical. That's exactly what the scripture is saying. Even though we walk in the flesh, but we have war, that is not physical, that is spiritual. 
And I always want believers to understand this particular uh, statement. Yes, we are physical. We are human. We have flesh. We have body. We have soul. We have spirit. Our lives depend so much on the physical body. But the Bible says the war, the battle that we are called to fight is spiritual. So he goes on to explain further. Verse number four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not physical. In other words, underlying that we have a war to fight. Every one of us that are physical, human being, living in the flesh, we have a spiritual war to fight. And number two, in verse number four, it says we have weapons. And the weapons to fight this battle, they're not physical, they're spiritual. Again, I take verse four again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. In other words, this weapon we need to use to pull down this stronghold, it's mighty. They're not carnal, but they are mighty through God. That set me thinking. This must have been a very, very deadly stronghold that we needed the weapons that are mighty. Not just weapons, but these weapons are mighty through God. Then the battle we are called to fight must be very strong. If you are someone like me, you will have thought, oh my God, maybe it's the holes of demons, maybe it's the power of darkness that is great, mighty kingdom set up by Satan. No, the Bible explains. What are these strongholds of the devil? Now again, I read verse number five. Casting down, this is how to fight the strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is very simple to understand. Where are those strongholds? The strongholds that the Bible says we need spiritual backing, the weapons that is mighty through God to fight. Where are those things? Amazingly, there are things that some of us Christians do not know or do not take concern about. One, it says, imaginations. I want us believers to look into this very carefully because when the enemy strikes, <clears throat> it strikes through your imaginations, your thoughts. We are defeated from our thought realm before you are physically defeated. You receive failure, arrow, attack majorly on our imaginations before it manifests in the physical. Remember I said we are spirit being and the war we are called to fight is spiritual. Based on that, we will continue on this lecture. The scripture says, and I want to lay a little more emphasis on it, though we walk in the flesh, our day-to-day -day activities depends on our flesh. We go out, we drive out, we have our physical body, we turn our dresses and make some plans and go out. But we do not war the battle we are called to fight, the battle we are called to fight as believers. They're not fleshly. They're not physical. We do not war after the flesh. And uh, I will tell you a little bit about that later on, that so many Christians are fighting wrong battle. That's why, no wonder when Paul was talking, he said, hey, I fight purposely, wisely. I do not fight as if I am beating the air. I concentrate on the right battle and I fight and win. Children of God need to consider the battle we're fighting. 
it is not physical. The next question you want to ask me, how about some physical being attacking us? How about the witchcraft we see in our areas, in our churches, amongst our family, who physically attack us and who told us that they are the ones that are responsible? Very simple. The one thing I want to tell you about us is this. We are just normal flesh until there is an assistance of the Spirit. We cannot do much more if there is no assistance of the Spirit. We could be transformed and do tremendous things when the Spirit of God or Spirit of darkness assist us. So this is what we should understand. The people that are witchcraft, the people that are into spirit war, the people that have done damages in the spirit, they don't do it in the flesh. They receive enhancement, support, assistance, and help from satanic spirit. And so when the, satan, the, the satanic spirit enter into a person, there's nothing they can do. They can even change to fish. They can change to dog. I have ministered to a lot of people who I see transformed into different things. I was ministering to a lady and a snake was coming out of the mouth. Now, all this has no much to do with the flesh that I was dealing with. One has to concentrate in the spirit. So when somebody is affecting you, attacking you in the spirit, even though he's wearing a body, in order for you to win, you need to confront the spirit that is inside that person. Deal with the spirit, and then the person will become just a normal man or normal woman. Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. Believers need to understand that, and that the battle we are called to fight the war that we are called to fight on daily basis, even in our workplaces, in our homes, in the church, they are not physical, they're spiritual. Having said that, I will quickly cross into something. That is why if you're a child of God, if you have a ministry, if you have a church, if you have a group where you meet, the first thing you do is to do uh, kind of spiritual cleansing and when i mean that i mean that you deal with the spirit surrounding the fellowship take the territory in the spirit in your prayer ask every spirit that is revolving around that area before you get him to disappear because you are taking the dominion and the rulership of that particular property same thing we do to christians so-called the people that gather along with you you're not going to tell them i'm casting out spirit from you no no you're in your prayer as a leader you must have bind every spirit of darkness that may be revolving and operating around your church your ministry your group even before other people gather take authority over the area take dominion over the place before people even gather because why we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. In other words, <laughs> it reminds me of a story of uh, someone who confronted a woman. The woman said, I will destroy you. And I'm going to show you that I'm the one doing it. And all these things have start happening. And the woman and the believer, this is a Christian, a child of God, and a woman was confronting him that I'm a wish and I'm going to destroy you and show you that I am greater and powerful, more powerful than you. This Christian brother said, no, I know Jesus that I serve. I mean, this person is a minister. So he said, no, 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 you cannot destroy me. You don't have what it takes to destroy me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the woman said, okay, I'm going to show you. One thing that happened was that this man lost his job. 
And it was very sad. And the woman said, I told you who I am. And then these brothers continued to pray. Then again, this man, the minister, lost his son. Then he was very mad. He went to the woman and said, you did it again because you told me you're going to show me. Then I am going to deal with you. Then the man, the minister, went to report to the police that I have a deadly woman, a wicked one that has been dealing with my family and then kill my son. So they came home and uh, interrogate the woman who said I'm a witch. They say, well, we heard that you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. The woman said, I don't know what you're talking about. They said, are you not the one who killed his son? You are under arrest. He said, well, where is the proof? Tell him to present a proof that I killed his son. Has he got a medical reason and a medical report that says I'm the one who killed the son? Then the police and, and the people that came around could not do anything because uh, the woman said, you can't arrest me because until you have an evidence that I kill. So that's how the case died. Actually, they even pick up the brother, minister, that why do you accuse the woman wrongly? Give us a proof that the woman killed your child. That is to bring us to the scripture. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. We have weapons. They are not fleshly. They are not carnal. Now, my advice is, if you find someone fighting you, spiritually attacking your businesses attacking your family attacking the ministry attacking your church then go ahead spiritually and fight back go back to your spirit reinforce your own power go back to god and begin to fight back spiritually we don't fight a spiritual battle with physical energy so we go from here what are the strongholds that we are to fight? The strongholds are listed. Some of them are listed in verse number 5. Verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. All right. Let's see some of the strongholds. Casting down. What are we going to cast down? What is the number one stronghold? Imaginations. <laughs> imaginations one of the strongholds of the devil is imaginations thoughts may I just tell you that if the enemy want to defeat you they start with your imaginations if the witchcraft want to walk on you and ruin you they use you they use your imagination your thought you first of all start to believe that I cannot succeed. I cannot do this. It's not going to work. No, there's no way I can come out of this. You think you, you will be thinking that it's you, but you don't know that the devil has suggested an imagination that can ruin you. Oh, this thing will fail. Oh, my child will die. When they start building up those imaginations, they're ready to finish you. This is what I want us to understand. The Bible says the strongholds start from your thought, your imaginations, the way you imagine things. They run and play with your mind. I always tell people that the greatest enemy to fight is your imaginations. When they start giving you those words, those negative things, then it will create fear. And when you have all these things running in your mind, you're telling God you're not, you are not strong enough to deliver me. The Bible says casting down. These are the things we need to cast down if we want to win the strongholds. We will have to cast down imaginations, negative, evil imaginations that is running through our minds 
women begin to think, I'm going to lose my husband. This marriage is not going to work. It's not going to work. This man is going to die. And here you are alone by yourself, nobody in your room. But your imagination has taken you so far that, surprisingly, some of us will find ourselves weeping, crying, with nobody around, nobody talking to you. But the enemy has fired an arrow to your imagination to make sure that you don't believe what you see in the Word of God. I'm handling a case now, been handling it for over a year now. This uh, young girl of about, about just three, four years of age, she'll be about, I think it's four or five years of age, I'm not too sure now. They brought her to me because uh, she sees a lot. It was the grandma that was into witchcraft that initiated this little girl. So they brought girl to me for deliverance. And uh, we we'll start trusting God. And this girl will tell you completely, I mean, straight, that the grandma is here. I can see her while you are talking. She's telling me what to do. I saw she's some spirit. And a lot of things that so mysterious, you, will have, you know that this girl is more than that age in the spirit. So I told the family, let's stand together with what the word of God says and start to pray. We don't fight the grandmother with a physical strength. We fight spiritually. This girl is so small and little. He doesn't know much. She doesn't know much. We need to rise up to fight. And I thank God the family agree with me. We start praying, we start fasting, we start holding on to God. And I give them assurance on the word. I say, you know what? The Lord is going to give this lady, this small girl, victory as we reinforce our authority in the spirit to deal with the forces of darkness that is controlling this girl. So we agree together and we start praying. After some time, the little girl would say, oh, she came again overnight. She gave me something to eat and things like that. And the parent will begin to worry. The mother will begin to say, I'm tired of this. I don't know when God is going to answer. That woman, we need to deal with that woman. as excuse me. There's nothing we can do to the mother. This is the mother to the husband. So what would you do to the mother, to the father of this daughter? So, it's nothing. We have to pray. We keep praying and holding on to God until finally, I told the woman, confess what the word of God says to your daughter. Speak it out. Agree with it. Do not nurture what the girl is telling you. Don't let it superimposed on what the word of God has said. Take the word and declare it. Even when the girl saw, sees the grandwoman, grandmother again, take the word of God and break down everything that the grandmother must have put in the girl. So we continue until recently the Lord gave us victory over this situation. And he called me just about a week ago to say, Please thank you, man of God, for running us through this moment. We have victory. And the girl even confessed now that we have victory over that witchcraft. The Bible says, casting now imaginations. Every believer must be ready to deal with what is running in your mind. What is it that the devil is telling you? Sometimes we think we are the one that are thinking. Sometimes you will believe if care is not taken that you know what you are thinking, you are intelligent, you are the one. How many times have you found that in your bedroom that you lie down and you are crying? Nobody is around. Nobody is speaking to you. They are just weeping. Why? Mm. This ministry is not going to work. We are going to fail. We are not going to succeed. It is not going to be possible. This is not going to work. I may die at a particular age. I will lose my wife. My family will, you know, all these jargons, imaginations. These are the weapons of that. This is the stronghold. 
The Bible calls it strongholds. Please don't joke with it. If there's anything you need to deal with, if there's anything you need weapons that are mighty through God for, I'm surprised. The Bible did not tell us we need weapons that are mighty through God to cast out devil. No. Read your Bible. This is the place where the Bible says we need these weapons that are mighty through God. Why? Because it comes from inside of you and destroying you. The Bible says we need these weapons to be able to overcome these strongholds. What happened to people that commit suicide and kill themselves without nobody around? Imaginations. What make people to carry guns and blow their heads with nobody around? Imaginations. What makes people to rise up in the morning and feel like I need to kill more than 1,000 people and they carry guns and start blowing the head of people? Imaginations. Imaginations. I've had so much story that you will be wondering when the devil wants to really strike, he goes to your imaginations. He brings fear. Let me just, just list a little bit of examples of strongholds. Fear. The purpose of the evil imagination is fear. To give you enough of fear. To think that life is not worth living. God is not who he said he is. I don't think I am secure. I'm afraid. Maybe I may die. I don't know what is going to happen. My ministry may just fold up in the day. Life is not going to be okay with me. With what I'm seeing. You know, fear. The greatest weapon imagination will bring to you is fear. Brethren, we always look out there to think our enemy is coming from somebody else. Our enemy is coming from a woman who looks old. Somebody who is attacking me from somewhere. The greatest weapons of darkness is using your imaginations. The Bible says that is where we need the stronghold. The, I mean, the, 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 the weapons that are mighty. That's where we need to use it. Imaginations. It brings fear. It brings unbelief. Unbelief. When fear starts troubling your heart for a long time, then you start doubting what the word of God said. You start disbelieving what the scripture says. You don't want to trust the word of God anymore because the purpose of the devil is to use your imagination to ruin you. I want to encourage believers today do not let your imagination direct you. Let the word of God, let it rule your mind. Most especially in this generation where we are. I want to read the scripture for you to understand again. In Luke chapter 11, verses 21 and 22. When a strong man harmed when a strong man harmed, keepeth his place, his goods are in peace. Hear this. If you know you need to keep yourself alive, you need to be very strong in your imaginations, in your thoughts, in your mind. Do not subject yourself to a moment of doubt, fear, and panicking. Many, many divorces today happen because the, the wife is afraid and accusing the husband wrongly, even if the man has not done anything. No, 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 no. I know you. I know you hate me. I know you want to kill me. I know you're not for me. And the man is saying, what do you mean? Where do you see that? No, I'm suspecting you now. And the same thing, vice versa, it could happen from a man. Panicking, fear, unbelief. Because of what Satan had planted in your imagination. If there's anything we need to fight and wait war with, deal with yourself inside of you first. The enemy outside there, they're not stronger enough. They first of all play a game with your imagination. Because that's the easiest way to hold to, to, to hold you responsible. 
in verse 22. But when a stronger man than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh him and all his armor. This is what the devil does. Children of God, make sure that you do not subject yourself to an imagination. Yes, we know thoughts pass through us, but you don't let it hang around you. Look at what happened with Jesus Christ. Look at how our master handled satanic imaginations and ideas. He came with all kinds of lies and deception. The Bible says Jesus responded by saying, it is written. How about this? Are you not hungry? It is written. Jump from here and then the angel of the Lord will hold your feet. It is written. The best way to tackle our imaginations is to know the word. Study the word. That's why the Bible says in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the only way we cannot conform to this word, he says, is we need a renewer, transformation and a renewing of our mind. I read again. Let me read. Romans 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Hmm. Renewing of your mind. Your mind can be satanic workplace where he would begin to ruin you, destroy you before you know it. Imaginations. There's anything we need to pay attention? Pay attention. The strongholds of darkness is your, in, in your imagination. If you read, read through the Bible, Everything you see that the devil has done, it comes through imagination. Elijah was a powerful man, strong, dynamic, brought fire down from heaven. Did great thing that has never been done in the Bible. Destroyed 400 prophets of groups and 400 prophets of Baal. 800 prophets, false prophets. He called fire from heaven and they were consumed instantly. That's how much God honored him. <laughs> but let me just show you. When Satan started to play with his mind, they looked for how to capture him. They couldn't get. They try every trick. It doesn't work. And then they quickly understand the best way is to use his imagination to capture him. Lo and behold, they send a young girl Go and tamper with his mind so we can have him. And the girl came and said, Hey, man of God, my master sent me to you to let you know, my master Jezebel, that by this time tomorrow, we will kill you. The Bible says from that pronouncement, his imagination was attacked. This man who have just destroyed 800 with heavenly fire cannot fire an house girl, a young girl who came to, a servant who came to deliver a message. His imagination arrested him. His mind captured him. They fired the arrow to his mind, to his imagination to destroy him. That is why the Bible calls it strongholds. Could you ever think about any other stronger hold that can arrest Elijah? Elijah? No. No matter the militant soldiers they were sending to Elijah, he will bring them down with fire. But now they now know and notice that the best option, the best way to capture Elijah is to play with his mind. Let us use his imagination to capture him. This is the strongholds of darkness. I want to encourage you not to play with this. Please, please, please. The Bible says we have weapons of our warfare, but they're not kind of, but they are mighty 
it has to be a mighty weapon to deal with our imaginations. Elijah, received a simple word from that house girl. I call her house girl, or just say a servant girl. And then from that moment, he lost his senses. Couldn't think right anymore. He didn't even inform his servant, his assistants. They started running with speed. That I think I need to die. My life is not worth living. Who told him? Imagination. No. I, I don't know why I'm alive. Nobody is here. Nobody is helping me. I have nobody. My life is at risk. I'm not going to do this ministry anymore. I'm tired of everything. And he went and sat down at Juniper tree. And there he was crying. I was thinking, I'm not better than my the any siblings of my fathers. And he was lying. Because you will remember that we never had of any name from the loins and the lineage of Elijah. No, no name of anybody better than Elijah. What happened? Imaginations made him to lie, to fear, to have unbelief, and all kind of things. It is so strong, the Bible says, the weapons that we have to fight it is mighty through God. Mighty weapons through God to the pulling down of strong holes. Now, I want to encourage you as a teacher, as a lecturer, as a pastor. Remember, Elijah is um, highly anointing, was, 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 was one of the top on the line, if not the only, that has ever done greatest greatest thing in the Bible. I've never heard of other people that call fire from heaven to destroy 800 people on the spot. Elijah? Or he was captured by his imagination, his thought realm. I want every one of us to please stay, pay attention on the imaginations, like I've mentioned before. People that took gone, spend their money, and put uh, the the gun in their. Uh, Hams and went around to kill and destroy people. It's just imagination. Nothing but their imagination. It tells them if you do this, that you just die and forget about this life. Life is not worth living. The worst case scenario, they arrest you and then life is over. <coughs> what a lie. What a lie. So imaginations bring fear, unbelief. Condemnation. Imagination. Imagination brings ignorance, anger, greed, falsehood, hopelessness, bitterness, murder. Imagination. So the Bible says we have strong, we have weapons that are mighty. <clears throat> through God. We have weapons that are mighty through God. So the pulling down of strongholds. Please pull it down. Pull down every evil imagination. Take what the word of God says. The only weapon you need to pull down the evil imagination is the word. Read it. Study it, meditate it, pronounce it, declare it, chew it. Let it be your power. Even when the word of God is contrary to what is happening to you, use the word, declare it, and accept it, and reject every negative imagination. That's where your power is. That's where your victory is. So, evil imagination destroys ruins can cause chaos it will bring bitterness it can cause murder falsehood condemnation 
anger, greed, unbelief, fear. That's what evil imaginations we do. So brothers and sisters, make sure that you do not allow the evil imagination to ruin your life and teach it to your fellowship, to your group. This is the weapons the devil is used to destroy us by us without nobody around you. And this is what is killing a lot of people. People will just be in their house, they just kill, they just die. I saw a, a, a kind of uh, documentary that really shocked me. Of a husband and wife, they were fine. Everything seems good, beautiful, they love each other. It was the, the wife that was home before the husband arrived. And the wife quickly went to the kitchen and prepared some meal for the husband. When the husband arrived, it was beautiful. He went, she went and hugged the husband. They went to the table, to the dining table. It was so much in love and everything looked so beautiful. So, they sat together and ate their dinner, sat down and watched TV together. It was so beautiful. Everything looked so good. Then they went to bed, went to sleep. Normally, uh, they have some good time of intimacy, just like married people will. Immediately after that, both of them slept back again. The husband reached under his pillow and brought out a gun and blow the head of the wife and I was like what is this quickly wrap the wife up fold everything neatly clean the blood fold the woman into the trunk of the car and drove him to a particular riverside in the bush and dump him there a dog had it. It was like, hmm, this is the people, they just showed they love each other, they're together. There was, I know that it was more than that. There was an evil imagination in the heart of the man that he has not explained to anybody. And when it is time to strike, the devil says it is the right time for you to strike. As children of God and as pastors and ministers, prophets of God, be careful when it comes to the strongholds of darkness. The Bible call it strongholds. Let me complete on that and then we will be able to go. It's a casting down the imaginations and every I thing, whatever is superimposing itself on the word of God that you know, whatever it is that is trying to let you know that the word of God will not take care of it, then those are imaginations. No matter how deadly the situation, the word of God have an answer for everything. And every eye thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring him into captivity. Every thought. In fact, when it comes to demons and power of darkness and satanic and evil angels, the Bible did not give us so much to do. It just said, cast them out. Just cast them out. Command them to get out of that place and that's it. But the one that needed higher authority, higher power, is your own imagination. Casting down. And he said you should do what? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity. Bring it into captivity. Chain them. Bound them. Those thoughts, those imaginations, those evil things that come to your mind, arrest them, bind them, 
put them into captivity. Put them into chain. Chain them down. Let the word of God be the reason why you are living. Put them in captivity. Chain them. Don't let them survive. Don't let them escape. Don't let those negative things dominate you. In other words, once a negative imagination starts surfacing in your heart, don't let it linger. Don't let it stay longer. No. Kill it. Defeat it. Chain it. Destroy it immediately. Because if you allow it to spread, it will result into damage. Look at Elijah. The example I gave you. The man thought he needed to die because of imaginations that became strongholds of the devil. The enemy knew that they cannot capture Elijah easily. He knew that there's no amount of power anywhere out there, rockets or anything. He knew that no, no kingdom, no power. They can't send any demon. Elijah will burn them alive. They cannot send any power of darkness. Elijah will deal with them and finish them. So therefore, why not let's use his own imagination to capture him? And they succeeded. But thanks be to God, who quickly intervened, went to Elijah and said, Boy, what's wrong with you? You are hungry. You will still continue. He even argued with God. When he even finished the food from, 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 from God, he slept back again. That's how bad, how deadly, how dangerous it is to be under the influence of satanic imagination without putting them into chain. Chain them. Casting our imagination and every other thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ, bringing them into captivities. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. They must whether they like it or not, they have to force them, chain those thoughts, bind them to the obedience of Christ. You have to. They have to. You have to force those thoughts, those imaginations. You have to ignore them, arrest them, and don't walk by their direction. As children of God, we are battles the greatest battle to fight is your imagination in your thought you have weapons from the almighty god the bible said he has given us weapons the weapon god gave us is mighty through god mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds i has so many examples of this because of our time but from experience that I have passed through in life in counseling in the ministry of spiritual warfare I can tell you a lot a lot there's uh, a case of uh, a woman as at that time happened to be a landlady to me and um, I knew very well she operates a spiritual she's diabolic she's kind of satanic woman but I don't have to fight her I have to fight the spirit in her so I knew it very well. God ministered to me very clearly that, hey, you are operating within this territory of darkness, this house where you are. This woman is dangerous and she's satanic. And I said, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing this. Now, every time I pray my prayer, I bind the spirit, I chain them down, and I tell them that this territory belongs to me. As at this time that they don't have no right over me here and I say this all the time and you know what the next thing is when the woman come up in the morning because we have to see each other when we're in the same beauty when the woman come up in the morning oh mama how are you and then we just 
Oh my God. The neighbors look at me and say, maybe they don't know. This. She, he doesn't understand this woman. He didn't know this woman. Everybody run from this woman. Everybody, nobody wanted to talk to her. But when I wake up in the morning, oh my God. Hey, how you doing? How are you? We'll have time, we chat. Sometimes she'll just say, oh, let me give you some drinks. We'll just send some bottles of some drinks and some can of some drinks that has, you know, um, non-alcoholic drinks. When she send those drinks, I don't drink it. But I'll take the drink and say, oh my God, you're thinking good of me. I appreciate you. Oh, you're a wonderful woman. Thank you. And I take the drink to my room and I ask the Holy Ghost, what do I do? The Holy Spirit says, trash it. And I trash it. Second day, I will come out and tell the woman, thank you, my God, you are just a wonderful woman. But in my spiritual altar, I finished her, destroy, bind her. Why? Because though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. After the flesh, we have weapons that are not canal. When you're dealing with people, you know, in these days we have all kinds of spiritual warfare that everybody around them is a witch. Everything they see is a witch. Everything they see, everybody. They fight with their family, fight with their friends, fight with their mothers, quarrel with everybody because they run away from everybody for fear. It's fear. No, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not kana, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We have mighty weapons. Don't misuse it. They're not for kana. They are spiritual and they are mighty through God. But the best way to handle it, deal with those thoughts. Deal with those imaginations. Deal with those fears. Deal with those unbelief. Deal with those hunger. Deal with those bitterness inside of your heart. Concerning anyone, concerning anything. Because that's where the devil wants to ruin you. The strongholds is in your imagination. The stronghold is in your thought. The stronghold that can kill, destroy, and ruin a person is inside of you. The Bible says, Put them into captivity. Give them no chance to breathe. Give them no opportunity to suggest. Give them no mouth to talk. Why? Exercise the word of God in your heart. Declare what the Bible says on a daily basis about yourself, about your ministry, about your church, about your wife, about your group, about your husband. Declare what the word says. And destroy every stronghold, imaginations, put them into captivities. This is the strongest that the Bible ever refers to to deal with. I'm encouraging you, as students, start to practice this. If you have group, start to lecture your group. The strongholds, it's not just the people outside. Elijah was not disturbed by the young lady that came. It was her mind. I mean, sorry, his imagination. He was the, his, his imagination that wanted to ruin him. When your imaginations arrest you, people outside will not be able to bear with you. Nobody will even know. Until one will kill himself or herself. The strongholds of darkness that they use to destroy is your imaginations and your thought. Put them in captivities that they might obey the word of God on daily basis as you live your Christian life. Amen. I know you may have some questions. I know you may want to or say, wow, I wish I can talk to the man of God. But Apostle Joan Jackson can answer your questions. 
and as well she could forward to me whatever questions you want to ask but i want to wish you a glorious moment and a lecture and i want to thank god that i have the opportunity to be a blessing to you and i'm coming again to bless you because this is a sister ministry we work together in the ministry god bless you for listening i want to pray before we close Lord, we are grateful because there is none like you. Great, almighty, all-sufficient, mighty King. Glorious God, we thank you for this lecture today. Pulling down strongholds. And we have shared it, we looked into it together. And I know that as we begin to utilize this, we will be able to rise on our feet to help our brothers, help our sisters, assist our members in the church, and also talk people out of the chain of darkness. Some people carry hatred in their mind. They thought everybody hated them. Somebody met me one day and said, am I stinking? Am I smelly? I say, smell what? She said, Every, everywhere I go, people think I'm stinking. I said, you're not. Imagination. Whatever the enemy has used against anybody here today to destroy, to deceive, to dilute their mind, I pray that today the power of the Holy Ghost will set them free in the name of Jesus. We put into captivity every thought that is negative, trying to ruin us, trying to destroy us. We bind them in the name of Jesus. We defeat every arrow of darkness, arrows of evil thought. Negative thing that says you are getting old, you will not find a husband. It's not possible. You're going to live like this and die like this. This disease will kill you. You will not survive it. All those negative things that is superimposing themselves on the scripture, we bind them, we delete them, we flush them out of our brain, out of our mind, out of our imaginations in the name of Jesus. I pray for victory. I pray for deliverance. I pray for testimonies. For people that are listening, and those, these students here and everyone that will hear this, I ask the glory of God to descend mightily and crush every power. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. I use these mighty weapons against every power. I use this mighty weapon against every negative thought. I use these mighty weapons against every imagination, evil imagination. I delete them. I put them under captivities. And I say you will no longer succeed over my sister, over my brother. Now I delete you and I command liberty for you now. In the name of Jesus, the God that set Elijah free, release you now. In the name of Jesus. As you go to your group, go to your fellowship, go to your churches, may the power of the Holy Spirit go with you to break every yoke of strongholds in the heart of the people. Thank you, mighty God, because of the lecture of today. Glory, honor, and power be ascribed to you forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord bless you. And I know that God has really ministered to you concerning this lecture and for the further lectures after now the woman of god will let you know and uh, i'm blessed to be your lecturer today you have a glorious and fruitful day in jesus name love you all see you again soon